Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only hobo Tom, and I'm here to talk about wrestling. I hope everyone has enjoyed my past videos. Uh, if I do look kind of blanky looking, it's about 2 in the morning. I figured hopefully most of Florida is asleep. Because I have to figure out how to do my unemployment because the, the system has been screwy ever since Wednesday. And Thursday I went fishing. I said, I said, I said F this. I'm going, I'm going fishing. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not doing screenshots. You guys would see a whole bunch of personal information right now. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's going quick. I wow. Can I get lucky? Nah. But I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling, and I'm so happy. I already got one of my bonuses right. I I heard from Dr. Tom as he skyped me from his own office that he predicted that. Goldberg would face Braun Strowman. I already got one thing right for... I got a bonus right for WrestleMania. That's pretty good. I, yeah, that's my Stone Cold Law. Again, I have... Neither he nor I have any clue about what's happening with the match stuff. Uh, a couple of news and notes before I get... Oh, no one talked to me. Oh, whoever left that like, thank you. Yes, it's always nice to see... You. Pop up a like. Um, see here. I still haven't cleared my copyright violation. So probably what's going to happen tomorrow. Unless they... No, nah, because it's already midnight. So tomorrow will probably just be a review show for day one of WrestleMania. I knew something screwy was going to happen. Sunday I'm going to be live streaming though. I think I might also try to live stream. No, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen right after Mania. Impact, I'm definitely gonna live stream because I know exactly what I can do with Impact. <laughs> it's back to the fun, fun stuff with Impact. That'll be good. Wednesday will be just a review. Of AEW, there's they have pretty tight standards there. I'm not too sure if there's gonna be a SmackDown, and I don't even think there's gonna be an Impact pay per view on the 11th. I have that funny feeling. Easter's the 12th. The president, whom I have a little bit more faith in, the president than the governor of Florida. I'd like to think. I mean, my little business has been done for about about right now about eh, two weeks roughly. One more week. I don't see most business like not not to be the Debbie Downer or or, or the the Hobolus Tom, but I don't see. I see a lot of companies for some reason after Easter saying, listen, get back to work, you son of a bitch. Get paid, you, you bum. Only because I can't see companies losing that because if it was my company, that would almost be a $100,000 loss. Companies, big nor small, do not like losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So but with all that said, though, let's talk about some happier things. Let's talk about some SmackDown and, and how this show is a dud. Uh, you could clearly tell that they're like, okay, we have to get something together because we have no clue what we're doing. So it starts off Miz TV. Um, all the ladders are in the ring, as they kind of always do whenever there's a big ladder match on a pay-per-view. It's Miz TV, the Uso show up, New Day shows up, they banter back and forth. Uh, Miz and Morrison come out, it's a brawl, they beat up everyone. Which further explains the math that Dr. Keller provided. Because he says the Usos are going to win. 
And that makes sense. Because Miz and Morrison stood tall. Math says, no, that's not happening. Uh, then we had our first triple threat match. It was Naomi, Lacey Evans, and, and Tamina. Um, Sasha Banks and Bailey are horrible on commentary. They needed people with a lot more energy, a lot more pizzazz. Nikki Cross was amazing. Asuka was also really fun, too. I mean, they could have had literally either one of those women show up, do their thing, and just to have Michael Cole all by himself. Hey, Michael Cole. Slip me a 50 bill. I'll be there on commentary with you, buddy. I mean, I could, I, I would have more pizzazz. But Bailey is boring. I don't know what it is. I still have a funny feeling Sasha Banks is going to get the belt off her. Uh, Cole was stirring the, whole, the pot the whole time. Commentary was just terrible. It was more about... The, t- the supposed tensions between Sasha Banks and Bailey versus the actual match. At least in Nikki Cross's match, even though she did color commentary, she was more of that fan. Yeah! Come on, Alexi! Come on, Alexi! Yeah! 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 yeah. Kill! Alexa, kill! Kill! Oh, okay. Uh, I'll get off the table now. And, and even Asuka. Awesome. Hey, I'm days old. She had this energy with her that Sasha Banks and Bailey just lack. And uh, I hate to say it, but and to quote a person, can't teach that. Uh, as far as the match goes, it was okay. Uh, of course, Naomi and Lacey Evans realized that Tamina's the monster heel. They double team her. Tamina then, again, did her monster heel comeback on both of them. Uh, Naomi did hit a springboard kick onto Tamina. So this was, the match was actually pretty good. The commentary just sapped the life out of it, though. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I think WWE NXT should almost make a rule. If you are going to be a wrestler... You need to actually spend just like one show at commentary. I know they work the video camera, but they have to spend a day at commentary so they know how to react. And granted, this is a completely bizarro situa- situation. But still, just to be dead like that and, and bring the match down? Triple H added so much. Nikki Cross added so much. Asuka added so much. Oh, that went quick. That's good. Next. But they added so much to it, though. It just... Sasha Banks just takes all that energy out of the room. And that blue onesie she was wearing was... Meh. Bailey's... Meh! Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, so again, and then Lacey Evans. Let's, so of course I haven't got her licking on to me, and then it's Lacey Evans turn. And then Sasha says, "Oh, I have to go use the bathroom." She she gets up and tries to nail. Ooh, that's good. I read this. Yes. This is going quick. Uh oh. This is weird. Weird. Maybe this was a. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, so yeah, and then and then she nails Lacey Evans. Her herself gets nailed by Naomi. Uh, Bailey then interferes. Uh, Naomi was by the ropes. Bailey jumped on the ring, snapped Naomi's neck onto the top rope. Tamina super kicked Naomi. Ah, Tamina wins. It was an okay match. They just don't know how to add inject any life. And talking louder doesn't mean that you're necessarily as excited. 
It just means you're good at talking loud. I mean, it could have been so much better. Again, it's... <sighs> Sasha Banks, unless she has a scripted, choreographed routine, is not good. Bailey as, a, as the Romulan villain is boring. So, I don't know what to say. Ever. It is what it is. Uh, so then Tamina was there. And, of course, she Bailey said, oh, yeah, thank you. But then, you know what? Bailey got super kicked for her efforts. Yes. Oh, Tamina, you don't realize you made the TV audience so happy when you did that. People might be rooting for you, even though we know you. Uh, and then Sasha got Samoan dropped. Sasha Bosch, uh, whatever. <sighs> you know what? This is a can of soup match. Then we have Tucker Knight. Uh, it's confirmed by Mandy Page. We'll find out because this is going to be interesting. This is kind of going the way that I foresaw. Uh, and then we have Otis and Tucker backstage. Yeah, Tucker. When told Otis that, that yeah, Mandy talked to him and Otis got a text from someone. So we'll see what happens. That was Tucker Knight taking on Dolph Ziggler. This was actually pretty good except for the ending. Again, the matches overall, the women's um, triple threat match was okay. Commentary really dragged that down. I think just the ending of this match, uh, it, it could have been different. Uh, Dolph, he's a little bit faster. Again, they, they do show collegiate wrestling. They didn't mention the fact uh, Dolph Ziggler, I want to say, went to Kent State. Uh, Tucker Knight. And they just call him Tucker. What, how come they're just, like, getting rid of names? It's not even fun. Let's see here. Uh-oh. Next. But that's just ridiculous, the fact that they're getting rid of last names. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, again, they do a little collegiate wrestling. Dolph is much faster. Again, some collegiate wrestling. Tucker Knight, well, I'm sorry, went to Arizona State. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden, it... <sighs> If you're going to have an empty arena show, don't do Chinlock Mania. And I know I'm not supposed to rub my face, but I'm so frustrated that all Dolph knows how to do are collegiately wrestle for about two, two minutes, do headlocks and chinlocks, and fling himself all over the place. Um, See, so yeah, I became Chinlock Mania. That actually happened twice during the match. Uh, Ziggler did get launched into the turnbuckle. Ziggler does have a pretty good uh, kind of Total World DDT thing where he really gets up there and spikes the guy down. Dolph went on the ring. Uh, he Tucker goes out, beat up Dolph a little bit, rolls back in to break the count, toss Dolph into the steps, and then Dolph decides, after Tucker Knight kind of steps and separate him, Dolph decides to zigzag Tucker Knight on the steps. And this is what I don't get. I don't understand why this is a disqualification only because he's not really the one. Dolph Ziggler wasn't the one really to set the steps up. He was just the one that kind of used him. Again, when you bounce someone off the table, because it's already there, it's not a DQ. I mean, Tucker Knight, using this logic, could have been DQ because he threw Dolph into the steps. I don't know. It, it didn't make much sense. And only Michael Cole was calling the match, so there was some energy. I'll tell you what. I, I will give Tucker Knight and Dolph Ziggler credit where credit's due. They at least brought the energy in the ring, besides Chinlock Mania. But, but with Michael Cole, it, it's just... Uh, he almost sounds indifferent. He's he's really quietish. Almost conscious of the fact that he can hear his own voice versus having a conversation with someone like he normally would. Um, I open my, oh no, that might have healed. Yay. 
Um, yeah, because I'm feeling thicker there. That's good. Now, the result in disqualification, the Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville showed up. And then Batman showed up. Because I don't know who it was. I don't know if it's... I have a feeling I was hoping it was going to be Killer Croc. I don't, I don't think so. I think Mustafa Ali is going like full on as, as this vigilante. Because he was in like the Matrix cave. And he showed footage of Mandy Rose texting Otis. And then she left her cell phone there. She then texted Otis something. She snickered. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. 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 Bow down to the queen of filth. Boo, Sonya Deville. Uh, Sonya Deville's never going to get shared. Because she, she ruined Otis's chance to get some loving on Valentine's Day. Along with pinning my princess, Kimberly. Who you will see in action in a couple of weeks here in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. She takes on Twisted Pixie. I have to figure out what. But we'll see. Maybe I'll make it a ladder match. I don't think Twisted Pixie's ever been in a ladder match. Indeed. But, yeah, so then Sonya was revealed as being. The conniving that she is. I think I kind of self muted myself there for a second. Or I had an audio issue. And if I can get some of this stuff. Ooh, there we go. Something happened. There we go. I'll be able to get that snowball microphone. That'll make my life probably a lot easier. I think I, think I had these. I think it's also the video camera. This might be getting a little beat up too. This has this little light there. So Boo Sonya Deville was revealed as a, as a conniving bitch behind all this. I have a pretty bad feeling that they're going to do some kind of lesbian angle with this because she's actually known to be a real life lesbian. Which hey, that goes on in the bedroom, stays in the bedroom. She she likes that. She send me the videotape, babe. Um. And that match was out again. It was just a can of soup match. Oh, and then we had... I forgot to mention this. But then before that, there was a replay of the Triple H... Of the, no, not Triple H. Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, uh, Ric Flair at WrestleMania 24. I didn't realize it was actually that short. Whenever I whenever I see clips of it, I'm like, oh, this is this is probably like a 30 minute match. No, nah, I think it only took 20 minutes. And then we had Daniel Bryan taking on Shinsei Nakamura. You see, he's gonna face. Um, whoop, whoop. oh, there we go. He because he is going to face Sami Zayn at WrestleMania in the empty area. He's gonna he probably just had a match with him like later. He's like, you know what, let's just chill out here for a little bit. Uh, so Daniel Bryan took on Shinsuke Nakamura. I had my hopes up, and Sami Zayn got on commentary. Sami Zayn did at least some color commentary. And it was really good because it added stuff to the match, which is what this whole show so desperately needed. And then, again, I was like, ooh. Daniel Bryan on Shinsuke Nakamura. Something we've seen before. Something we've dreamed to see. Oh, this is going to be so good. Actually, it's not free. It was a very technical match. Again, they trade wrist locks. Uh, Daniel Bryan does the baseball slide and then the flying double knee because Shinsuke winds up on the outside of the ring. Uh, Daniel Bryan got dropped on the back of his head. He has to be careful about that. That's how you get concussions, my good man. Shinsuke Nakamura did the sliding German suplex. And then just started throwing knees in the corner. Oh, they looked vicious too. I think Shinsuke Nakamura was actually enjoying himself for this. He's like, oh, finally, I get to face Daniel Bryan, the guy that taught me how to surf. Because I know in Discord, people are saying, oh, he's checked out. It's like, no, nah, dude, he just doesn't want to be in neck-breaking competitions. 
like they had in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He wants to like be able not to have surgery when he gets older. He wants to be able to surf. He wants to enjoy stuff. Hey, he's collecting a fat paycheck. He's kind of, it's a more of a grind only because of the traveling, but he's allowed to rest and recuperate. I'm not going to deny a man his simple pleasures like that. And then there were the yes kicks, both to the front and back. Let's see here. Yes, or next. And so that was really good by Daniel Bryan. Um, can then Shinsuke Nakamura reverse that just through knees to the head? Daniel Bryan then then uh, Shinsuke Nakamura he was kind of gas. He kicks the arm out. Shinsuke Nakamura falls flat and uh, he applies. Daniel Bryan then applies a single leg leg crab. And then again, Daniel Bryan did the alternating kicks for a little bit. Shinsuke did the same thing. That's pretty good. Good back and forth. And then I, I I know why they did this. I just don't like the fact that they did this. Cesaro came in, jumped Daniel Bryan in the ring. If the DQ finished, baby, this could have been so good, but we are running out of time. My man John Cena has to speak. So, overall, the match, yeah, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Only because of the finish. So, I mean, this has just been, I don't know, this was not a good Raw. But I'll tell you what, the end saved it. Because John Cena came out, cut his promo like like he normally does. Yeah. Cut his promo like he normally does. Um, he was shooting from the hip, which was pretty good. Um, however, John Cena. No, no. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate. Down the dark side of the force. Does that lead? Uh, he shoots from the hip. He says, this has been a tumultuous time. We don't know what's going to happen. Kind of hinted that there might not be a SmackDown after WrestleMania. That That's interesting. I don't know if it's real. I just said it was interesting. And then the puppet show up in the audience. Yeah, so finally someone has someone to talk to. There's finally some interaction. And listen, the Ramblin' Rabbit has 20 lives. Because the Ramblin' Rabbit, yo, John Cena, John Cena rocks. It's like, I've heard that voice. That's Ramblin' Rabbit. He's alive. That stupid puppet's been destroyed so often I was just shocked that was really good this is going a lot quicker than I thought so I just have to keep this up this is good I don't care if I'm here till 4 in the morning I'll get this like I'm doing it actually yeah, I am doing stuff tomorrow I'm going to be making well, well I'll mention that later uh, so the puppets were in the audience again. There was there was no mercy. I didn't see uh, Mercy the Buzzard though. I did see Porcus or Huskus the pig. I call him Porcus. Um, Abby the Witch was there. Ramblin' the Rabbit was over there. Then yo, John Cena, watch out behind you. The the, the fiend shows up on the Titantron. And John Cena, this is not good because he got Sethitis, where he is very easily distracted by things that happen around him. And he was just staring at the screen. The lights went off. And then it was kind of cool because... Mr. Rogers, Bray Wyatt showed up, or well, Bray Wyatt showed up wearing his sweater and just said, Let me in. 
like see you at WrestleMania, but he just like popped up in lights when when black. Bray Wyatt also has powers of the fiend where he can also teleport. I like that. That's different. So that means he can be at two places at the same time, which hopefully means that John Cena is going to wrestle two matches at WrestleMania. I hope his matches is like forty minutes long. He has to face. He goes he goes into one room. It's the Firefly Funhouse. He goes into uh, like the basement, and he has to face the fiend, or he has to go into like the woodshed and the fiend. Uh, so, something like that, where it's, where it kind of has a feel like two different settings. Whereas if you remember with the final deletion, was it the final? No. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the final deletion between Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy kind of took place all across the Hardy compound. Still one of the best matches ever. Oh, they're not going to. Oh, if, if they put in firework bazookas. Oh, wow. That would be so cool. I don't think they're that cool, though. But again, he has Seth Ice. He gets distracted. Um, lights go out. Bray Wyatt disappears. Puppets disappear. John Cena is left in the ring by himself. And that was SmackDown. Oh, wow. This took a lot short time. But so that's gonna lead us into WrestleMania. So I already guessed one thing correctly. Which makes me feel good about something. Um again a little bit of the schedule. The Sunday or little Saturday, I'm gonna be doing a review of WrestleMania. Sunday I'll be live streaming WrestleMania. Monday will probably be a review of Raw. Because I'm not being three hours if they're just like replaying stuff. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. So with that, then Tuesday is going to be Impact. Tuesday, I think I will live stream though. Wednesday, I'm going to do a review of AEW. Thursday, I'm actually just going to relax. Friday, who knows what I'm going to do Friday. Um, Smackdown or whatever. And then probably by Sunday, I'll put another video of up to 10 things I did while on lockdown here in Florida. So again, that's going to be pretty interesting and we're living in very interesting times and this is going nice and fast so this is a good thing this was smart of me to do this no don't do that you stay up you go away so overall smackdown can of soup So I'll see you guys, or you guys will see me on Saturday, and I'll see everyone on Sunday when I do my get back to live streaming. Bye. Let me in. Or let me out. <laughs>